Distributing programs written in Python can be rather difficult. It's interpreted, meaning that it can't be compiled natively into an EXE like something like C++ and Rust. And this nature you know, makes it difficult to you know, create EXEs or DMGs that people could just run natively on their computers. One solution to this is to get your user slash client to install Python on their system. However, while that may work in some instances, a lot of people or a lot of you know, just general end users aren't going to like having to install Python just to be able to run your program. And it's a bit of a useless dependency, especially if you know they're not going to develop anything in it. And then you have the whole thing about uh, different Python versions may be causing issues, and it's just a bit of a mess. Thankfully, there is a tool called PyInstaller that is here to save the day. Now, this isn't exactly new. It's been around for a good while. I have actually used this before about two years ago, and it has changed quite a bit since then. It's become a lot better since then. But there were other tools as well, such as like, I think pip freeze, like pi to exe, cs freeze, cv freeze. I don't remember the names for them. It's been such a long time. But those uh, tools all had their own issues. Pi installer was the best back then, um, but it wasn't perfect. They seem to have fixed a lot of the, the problems that it had and they've made it a lot easier to use. So I thought, you know, since this is still a very commonly asked question, I would make uh, an up-to-date video explaining how it all works. To install it, you do pip install pi, you actually spell install correctly for a start, that'd be useful, and then pi installer. And I've already got everything installed on here, so it's not gonna need to do it. Uh, as I said, I'm using Windows. If you're using a different operating system, you may need to do some more setup. This page in the pi installer talks goes over all of that. I haven't tested any of this, so I don't know if any of it actually works. I you know, back when I used to use Pi Installer back in the day, I was actually programming on Windows um, all the time. You know, nowadays I do it on Linux. Uh, I just did this one on Windows because it's easier uh, for this. But yeah, you may need to install extra stuff to be able to get it to work. So I've created a little demo program to show this off. The first one is this file here, uh, demogy.pyw. This PYW uh, tells Python to launch the program without a console. Uh, if you double click it. Uh, and this just creates a simple, you know, to Kintel, TK into however you want to pronounce it, window with a message and an exit button. And that's basically it. It also imports this MOTD, uh, which is here. And it's just, you know, it gets a message of the day um, kind of thing, you know, and there's some cool little messages there. So to actually build uh, the program, all you need to do is open the console and do pi installer uh, and then you provide the file name. So in this case, it's demogui.pyw. Now I don't need to provide this MOTD file because the demogui file imports it. So if you have this whole project uh, built off multiple Python files, if you provide your main file, you know, the one that actually runs everything to PyInstaller, it will be able to work out, oh, I need this file as well without you needing to supply it. So you don't need to supply a directory or anything, you just need to supply the root file. And if you run that, it will start building everything it needs. And once it's all done, I'll show off that it all works just fine. While that's going on, I will actually show the PYW thing for people that don't know about it. So if I double click this PYW file on Windows, you'll see the thing comes up, but there's no console window. If it was just a PY file, then a console window would appear in the background. Because it's a PYW file or Python Windows file, uh, it doesn't show it, and you're doing great. Look at that. Okay, so now that it's done, uh, it goes in this dist file here. Uh, you can change that, I forget how to though, into demo GUI, and then you have all this stuff here, and then down here you have this demo GUI.exe. You can run that, and you can see it does exactly the same thing. It just shows a different message this time, but it's exactly the same thing, just now running in uh, an exe rather than Python. So that's the basics of how this all works. There are some different options that you can employ, um, but before I kind of go over those, I do want to talk about this spec file that it creates. So when you run the pi installer command, it creates a spec file for you if one doesn't already exist. And this spec file essentially tells pi installer what to do. So there are a number of options here. You know, this first one is the file it needs to use. And there are a load of options here. I'm not going to go over this in detail. There's a lot to it and the documentation kind of covers it. But I will um, briefly demonstrate one aspect of it, which is this datas uh, here. So you can use this to include additional files in your distribution. And this is a list of tuples. 
So say if we wanted to include this readme file in our distribution, because currently it's not here. There's no readme file to be found at all. So if we wanted to include it, we could just provide the readme.md as uh, the first element of the tuple, which is our input, and our second element tuple uh, of the tuple is the output. So if you wanted it in the current directory, you'd do a dot. If you wanted it in a new folder called test, uh, then you would put it in a folder called test. This output directory is relative, um, so just keep that in mind. And now we can rebuild our distribution. I've gotten rid of the build and dist uh, folders because I don't know if that causes problems, they're still there. But instead of building from our PYW file, we now build from our spec file. If you build from PYW file, it would actually recreate the default spec and it would overwrite this and you'd lose it. So if we use this spec instead, it will be able to see that. And now it will start building exactly the same thing. But if we get our directory ready, in our dist, when it finishes up, we go in here and now we have this folder called test and our readme is in here. And if we just open this up, we can see that it just says damage UI and it gives us a good henlo. But you may be thinking this is quite a lot of files to have. You know, there's, there's this huge amount of things, you know, a lot of EXEs and stuff do have random files all over the place. So this isn't particularly unheard of. Um, but there is actually a way to get rid of them all if you don't want them. And that is by doing, if I do pi install PYW, if I get rid of the build and dist again, again, I don't know if it causes problems if they're still there. We can do dash and then a capital F. And what this will do is it will build it in a single file. So it will put everything in the exe. And one thing to note is that the spec file does look different. If you do this, and now it isn't a collect call down here. And if you put anything in the datas, it will be bundled into the exe itself. So you can put images into the exe, for example, which is especially useful if you don't want people like modifying or stealing the images. Um, but that does also mean that you can't put text files directly in it. What you can do instead, if this is done, I don't know, this is not quite done yet. But what you can do instead is, so you have your, uh, you know, the exe will come up here. And then you can actually just put files in this distribution and then you can distribute the, you know, the files manually as you go. Um, so I could put, <clears throat> say, the readme in here, you know, and it would now be available uh, for the program to use should it need to read it. Um, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. If you don't want all of those, all of the crazy, you know, DLL files and everything, there we go. It takes a little while, I think. Um, then you can do that and it just bundles everything into the exe itself. I believe it takes a bit, I believe it is a bit slower to do and I believe uh, running it from an exe is slower than just running it from the Python file anyway. Uh, I don't know the mechanics of how they've gotten this to work. My guess is that it has a Python like interpreter or something like built into it and it just runs it, I don't know. But either way, uh, that is the basics of how to create an exe with Pi Store. There's so many options that I'm not going to go over them all right now. The, the documentation is available if you have more advanced needs, though it does explicitly state that in the vast, vast majority of cases, you won't need to create your own spec file. So there are probably only a few options you're ever going to need to use. Uh, I've done this on far more complicated projects before. I used to, um, when I built a Discord bot for my friend, he used to run it on his own computer and I actually gave him an exe file. So I compiled entire Discord bots using Pi Install and it worked fine. And that was using very basic options too, I believe. So yeah, that is the easy and quick way to build exes in Python. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, leave a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more like it. If you have any suggestions of what you want me to cover in a future video, leave them in the comments below and I'll see if I can get back to it. If you want to support this channel monetarily, then there are two ways to do it. The first of which is to become a member using the join button. The second of which is to become a patron. Uh, one pound a month on either of those, you can be on this screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video where I do a video that I've been meaning to do for about seven months now, seven or eight months. I did put out a community post mistakenly saying it would be last Friday. It's actually this Friday. That was my bad, sorry about that. Um, so that would be, <laughs> I'll be, I'm finally getting around to some, you know, some really old videos that I've been meaning to do. So I'll see you for that.